Born amidst the picturesque landscapes of Karlsbad, nestled in the heart of Bohemia, which was then a part of the sprawling Austria-Hungary, Frank's early years were steeped in the fervor of nationalist sentiments. His father, a staunch advocate of Georg Ritter von Schönerer's ideologies, imparted upon him the principles of nationalist agitation, shaping his worldview from a tender age. Despite his aspirations to serve in the Austro-Hungarian army during the tumult of World War I, fate intervened, denying him entry due to a debilitating blindness in his right eye. Undeterred, Frank embarked on a scholarly journey, enrolling in the esteemed law school of the German language, Charles University in Prague. To support his studies, he took up the role of a tutor, navigating the intricacies of academia while striving to make ends meet. Fueled by an unwavering belief in the incorporation of the Sudetenland into Germany, Frank's allegiance found a home within the folds of the German National Socialist Workers' Party, DNSAP, by 1923. Eager to propagate his ideals, he played an instrumental role in establishing numerous DNSAP chapters across northern Bohemia and Silesia, cementing his position as a fervent advocate for the cause. In a bid to disseminate Nazi literature and ideology, Frank ventured into entrepreneurship, inaugurating a bookstore in 1925 dedicated to the dissemination of National Socialist literature, thus becoming a conduit for spreading the party's doctrine. With the dawn of 1933, Frank's fervor reached new heights as he became an integral figure in the formation and organization of the Sudeten German Homeland Front, SDH, a pivotal entity that later metamorphosed into the Sudeten German Party, SDP, in 1935. Transitioning seamlessly into the realm of public relations and propaganda within the SDP, Frank wielded his influence adeptly, harnessing the power of persuasion to advance the party's agenda. The pinnacle of Frank's ascent came in 1935 when he assumed the role of deputy leader within the SDP and secured a seat in the Czechoslovak parliament, thus wielding political influence in tandem with ideological fervor. Emerging as a stalwart representative of the most radical Nazi faction within the SDP, Frank's trajectory soared as he was appointed Deputy Gauleiter of the Sudetenland following its annexation into Germany in October 1938. Cementing his allegiance, Frank formally pledged his loyalty to the Nazi Party and the SS on verse November 1938, solidifying his position within the echelons of power. In 1939, Frank ascended to the rank of SS Gruppenführer and assumed the pivotal role of Secretary of State within the Reich Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, operating under the auspices of Reich Protector Konstantin von Neurath. Simultaneously, he was designated as the Higher SS and Police Leader of the Protectorate by Himmler, thereby solidifying his authority as the paramount SS officer in the region. Despite ostensibly falling under Neurath's jurisdiction, Frank wielded substantial influence and power within the Protectorate, commanding the Nazi police apparatus, which included the Gestapo, the SD, and the Kripo. In his capacity as Secretary of State and Chief of Police, Frank pursued a policy of ruthless suppression aimed at dissenting Czech individuals, actively advocating for the apprehension of Prime Minister Alois Eliáš of Bohemia and Moravia. However, his hardline tactics clashed with Neurath's more lenient approach towards the Czech populace, which emphasized conciliation over coercion, inadvertently fostering anti-German sentiment and resistance through strikes and acts of sabotage. Frustrated by Neurath's stance, Frank clandestinely orchestrated efforts to undermine his authority. The turning point came with Hitler's decision to adopt a more aggressive stance in Bohemia and Moravia. In September 1941, Hitler relieved Norath of his active duties, retaining him in a titular capacity as Reich Protector. Frank anticipated being appointed as Deputy Protector, poised to assume the mantle of day-to-day -day governance. However, to his dismay, Hitler instead appointed Reinhard Heydrich, charging him with the formidable task of enforcing Nazi policies, quelling dissent, 
and maintaining crucial production quotas vital to the German war machine. Despite initial tensions stemming from the competition for power, Frank and Heydrich forged a symbiotic partnership characterized by their shared ambition and ruthlessness. Together, they initiated a reign of terror across the protectorate, targeting opponents of the Nazi regime with arrests and executions, while escalating the systematic deportation of Jews to concentration camps. By February 1942, their draconian measures had resulted in the arrest of thousands and the execution of hundreds, as they ruthlessly sought to consolidate Nazi control over the region. Following Heydrich's assassination in 1942, Frank found himself once more overlooked for the coveted role of deputy protector, with Kurt Daluega assuming the position instead. However, this setback did not deter Frank from exerting his influence. Collaborating closely with Daluege, Frank orchestrated a brutal retaliation against the Czech populace, epitomized by the infamous destruction of the villages of Lidis and Lejaki. In a chilling display of ruthlessness, Frank commanded Horst Boma, the chief of the Sipo and SD in Prague, to execute all the men of Lidis, dispatch the women to concentration camps, and subject select children to forced Germanization while condemning the remainder to death. In June 1943, Frank's ascent continued as he was promoted to the prestigious rank of SS Obergruppenführer and General of Police in Prague, concurrently assuming the mantle of general in the Waffen-SS. Under Daluage's tenure, Frank's influence burgeoned, solidifying his status as the preeminent figure in Bohemia and Moravia by the time Wilhelm Frick assumed the role of Reich Protector in August 1943. Bestowed with the title of Minister of State for Bohemia and Moravia, Frank wielded considerable authority within the region, although lacking the formal designation of Reichsminister. Undeterred by mounting resistance, Frank personally spearheaded anti-partisan operations in Moravia in 1944, targeting the Jan Zizka Partisan Brigade. Despite deploying substantial military forces and resorting to the summary execution of civilians suspected of aiding the partisans, Frank's efforts proved futile as the brigade continued to elude capture, prompting erroneous conclusions regarding its eradication. Frank's reign of terror came to an abrupt end with the collapse of Nazi Germany. Captured by U.S. Army troops in Rokikany on 9 May 1945, he faced trial before the People's Court in Prague in 1946, where he was found guilty of war crimes and the atrocities committed at Lidis and Lejaki. Sentenced to death, Frank met his fate on 20 Sewika May 1946, when he was hanged in the courtyard of Pancrack Prison, witnessed by a crowd of 5,000 spectators. His remains were interred in an unmarked grave at Prague's Jobless Cemetery. In his personal life, Frank's marital journey was marked by two unions. His first marriage to Anna Muller in 1925 yielded two sons, Harold and Gerhard, before ending in divorce in 1940. Frank then wed physician Karola Blaschek in 1940, with whom he had three children, daughters Edda and Hollis Sigrid, and son Wolf Dietrich. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.